to the racks every week. Keep craving that rush that you get when you flip to the next page. Life is better when you live in between Wednesdays. Yes, say you got a mass of back. What's up, folks? I'm your host, Conrad, on Wednesday Night Reviews, and today I'm joined by Mary Landro, and we're going to talk about their new Kickstarter comic, Rich. Mary, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. Glad to hear it. Uh, so getting right into it, um, for the folks who've maybe never seen your face, never heard your name, who is Mary Landro? Um, so yeah, I'm a Canadian comic book artist. Um, I've worked on a bunch of mostly independent comics, um, and I'm finally working on my own, which is rich. Um, so yeah, I like to draw a lot of monsters and like kind of dark, gritty stuff and like Spawn. So yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Spawn is a classic. Uh, and uh, <laughs> obviously I do like to showcase Canadian folks when I can. Um, so what province are you in? I'm from Alberta, so Edmonton. Oh, beautiful. We got the city. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I always like to showcase Canadian creators because um, basically I find a lot of people hear comic books and they think, oh, America, Americans. And I'm like, no, we actually have a lot of Canadians that make really good comics. Yeah. Ah. Um, so, yes, we're here to talk about your book, though. So tell us about Rich. Um. Yeah. So it's been my passion project for a few years and finally releasing it. It's basically a dark fantasy comic um and it's kind of about a world with a bunch a lot of monsters a lot of magic um and it's basically following two main protagonists as they discover powers of their own and um eventually develop into either heroes or villains um so there's gonna be a lot of focus on kind of like villains and what can develop someone into that in the area in between and um, yeah, basically this world where kind of rich humans live in this utopian city that's kind of walled off from everything else and like monsters, mutants, uh, anyone with powers, such and such is banished outside of it and kind of everything that comes along with that. Fascinating, okay, that's super cool. Um, <laughs> then you know what, I, and I'll make sure I put up images that are on the Kickstarter so people can see it. Um, already the the kickstarter you're i think you're what six days in you're you're five thousand or no seven thousand out of ten thousand dollars down i think it's actually yeah. seven thousand twenty six which is awesome um is this your first time doing a kickstarter it is yeah i've been wanting to get this comic out there for forever and initially i wanted to try to send it to like image or something like that and just didn't have the time and couldn't really afford to work on pages that I wasn't like getting paid for. So it just never happened. And then this year, my fiance was like, well, all the comics you've been working on have been funded on Kickstarter. So why don't you just do a Kickstarter for your comic? So I was like, yeah, I guess I could do that. So yeah, this is the first one. So definitely learning a lot from it so far. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um... It is definitely experience. Um, I, one thing I, I wanted to ask, because I've interviewed some folks, and at the point that they're at, they've already got the comic done, and it's just Kickstarter is a, mag a matter of funding, printing, and shipping. Mm -hmm. um, from what I've seen of your work, and, and people can catch on your TikToks and in Instagram Reels and things, um, it looks like real time you're showing like day eight of making my new comic. Yeah. Um, so you're currently in the act of actually drawing every page and actually making the book, correct? Yeah. So we wanted to factor that into the Kickstarter too, because yeah, since I basically do comics full time, then I'm working on like a page a day for other people's comics um, for to make my income. So basically, like in order for me to actually be able to work on my comic. We had to kind of factor in a page rate, albeit like heavily discounted because I'm like <laughs> my own stuff. I want to work on it, but yeah. at least so I can like <laughs> still pay the bills <laughs> and have time to work, actually work on the pages. Um, we had to do it a little bit differently because of that. So yeah, so I'm kind of, I'm on page five right now and I'm hoping to just kind of be able to, once the Kickstarter's funded, then I can actually like spend a day, do a page a day and get it out like as quickly as possible. Awesome. And in, oh, where do I want to go? Uh, we'll talk about <laughs> the art itself first, I guess. Um, 
So your art style, uh, and people can go to your website, which we'll have links down below. They can check it all out. Um, it's super dark, but super detailed. Um, it almost, like when I saw it, um, it reminded me of a little bit of classic McFarlane on like the first 20 issues of Spawn or so, and like a mix of John Boy Myers, because you have the, um, I don't know the, the proper art term for it, do forgive me, but like... <laughs> Your, your work has um, almost like a glossy look to it. It's very polished, extremely well finished. Your your blacks are like pitch black. Um, how did you come up with that style? Like, uh, as I understand it, you, you're fairly young. I believe you're younger than myself. Um, I'm 25, yeah. 25, so you, you're yes. coming out of the gate strong. Um, yeah, how did you arrive at your style? Did you have like formal education in art? Did you just draw comics and stuff because you love them? How did that happen for you? Well, it's kind of funny that you mentioned the dark blacks thing because um, I haven't taken any like art school aside from high school, just art class or whatever. Um, but yeah, back in like art class in high school, my teacher would always say like, never use, or I think it was my high school teacher. Some teachers always said never use like black black for your blacks so always use like a really dark gray or something and i was just so like not into that i was like no like a really dark black looks so good like i love that so i don't know i've kind of since then just always tried to do like really dark darks and really kind of bright whites to contrast it but yeah i actually went to school for psychology and yeah. then um kind of just was doing art in my spare time and like posting on instagram and stuff and then after it started kind of doing well on Instagram and started getting more interest for it, I was like, oh, I can actually like do this for a living. It could actually be possible. So um, I kind of stopped like going to class and just started like <laughs> drawing more and eventually just transitioned to kind of sort of dropping out of school. I still need to finish my degree, but I'm like, oh, I'm never going to use it. I mean, <laughs> so, <laughs> From what I've understood, the way the, with everything you've said so far, it you're doing comics full time, correct? Yeah, yeah. And that's covering your bills. Yeah, yeah. Why waste the money on further? Like, come on, you, you're already yeah. doing it. You, you've hit the point of comics full time. Run with it. Um, speaking of comics full time, um, so in my research, I found you've done two other books for other folks. So you've done like in Girls Night Out. Uh, and actually, one of the previous interviews I had about four months ago, you've done Frankenstein, The Unconquered. Um, yeah. Which, was there a previous comic even to those two, or were one of those sort of your, your first step into the world? Actually, I think my first one was another comic by Four Color, who did Frankenstein. Um, it was from an anthology they put out a few years back called Descent into Dread. Um, so I did like a, I think it was an eight page, seven or eight page comic for that anthology. And that was like my first job ever. And then after that, um, I'm also working on one called Rubicon. Um, and that one I was the first book for that was like my second job and I'm on book three for it now. So I've been working on that as well. So, but yeah, four color Frankenstein guys, that was my first job with their other anthology. So that's so cool um how long have you been making comics now um i think i started on that first one back in i think 29 2018 or 2019 uh 2017 was when prior to that i'd kind of like stopped drawing and kind of forgot about it and 2017 i think i picked up a comic or something and kind of reignited it so I started 2017 was when I really started like practicing and learning and stuff and then yeah kind of progressed from there awesome um and, and like you said you like drawing spawn monsters um what in inspires your style like what is it that you're reading that or that you have read I should say that makes you go like that was cool I wanted to draw that where did you start I think well, I grew up reading, um, well, a lot of older comics. I read the fire, like old Firestar comics, and I loved those as a kid. 
But then I think one of my favorites growing up was Todd McFarlane's run on Spider-Man. Oh, and I okay. had, my mom had this like volume that had all his Spider-Man issues in it. And that was like, I think I read it like a hundred times and like tried recreating the drawings and stuff. So that was a huge inspiration. And then uh, when the Bone comic series came out, oh yeah, yeah. That, I was obsessed with that. And I think those were the comics that made me go like, I want to make stuff like this. Like I want to do comics. So, and then now Spawn, I think I love Spawn. So I think that's kind of changed my style to getting a little more darker and stuff and kind of be, making it seem like, okay, it's okay to do comics and make them like really dark, and really gritty and stuff like that. So that's fantastic. Um, so from the sounds of it, and, and, and I mean this with, with, the utmost of respect it sounds like you've been a lifelong nerd and your mom's one too is that right oh yeah my whole family we're all nerds here. <laughs> <laughs> perfect that's what i like to hear um so we've talked about 12 minutes now or so um obviously we'll all make sure we have tons of images up of your art so people can see what it looks like um what is when it comes to the kickstarter um so people can go out support your book and everything like that um, one of the things that I find that makes them apprehensive about it is what if it doesn't get made? What if I don't get my book? All that kind of stuff. And especially when the, the, the aspect of, oh, it's a lot of money. Um, so just so that everyone is aware, the, the minimal um, pledge, that's what it's called in Kickstarter, the minimal pledge mm -hmm. that they can make to get like a digital copy of your book. Um, what would that run somebody? So just that is uh, $8. So $8. it starts pretty nice and low. So yeah, if you don't want to commit too much, but you still want to support the project, then that's like a nice a nice part of that. Um, and then the next up is the physical copy, which is 25. Um, but I actually just announced today, all the physical copies are going to be upgraded to foil covers. So that'll be, that was kind of a nice little perk we we're planning on from the start. So. Yeah, I'm really excited to get those out to people and get like a nice foil cover in their hands. Congratulations, that's awesome! And <laughs> and again, like it, you're you're six days in on your your first loan Kickstarter. You're you're seven out of ten grand down, a little more than that, but that's huge. Um, when it came to to planning Rich out, like I, I always like to ask this: How long ago did the idea for rich become a thing was this like oh you know literally you can see on your tiktok oh day one of making my comic was that when it was like a thing or had you written a bunch out years prior because i find people range wildly on that so for you um when was rich born i think it was probably like as a kid some of the characters that are in it i had as a kid probably in like junior high I kind of had a very, very, it's not even remotely similar, but a comic that I always worked on with like some of the characters. So some of the characters have been pulled over from that. Mm -hmm. um, but the actual idea for it kind of came into being probably in like 2017 um, when I first got like went to the store and got an iPad finally. And my brother and I were looking at all the like tools and stuff in Clip Studio and Procreate on it. And we were like, oh my gosh, you could for sure make like a manga on this and then we we're like well okay we should make one like what should it be about so me and him kind of just sat down that night and like brainstormed ideas and he helped me come up with a bunch of the stuff for the world and the origin of it and stuff so yeah probably since 2017 and um but i've had the story going for a lot longer than the pages i i made a couple goes at the pages back in 2017 but and over the years, but I would kind of draw a few and be like, no, it's not looking how I am picturing it. Like, wait a few years. So I was kind of waiting to get to a point with my art where I was confident enough uh, that I could draw it out the way I was imagining it. So, but yeah, it's been developing over quite a few years. So I'm really excited to like finally be making it happen. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and I'm glad to hear it. Um, also, I love the passion. Um, one of the cool things about getting to talk with indie comic creators, you know, who are doing Kickstarters just like yourself is that passion, right? Cause I've gone to a lot of comic cons and, um, you know, I'll talk to comic book artists and it, they're like, Oh yeah, this is my new book. It, it's about X. And I'm like, 
Where, where's the fire? Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like it, I love doing this because you, you're active. You're, you're up. You're like, I'm excited. I want to do this. Love the passion. Please keep at it. One kind of cool thing as a fan of, of metal and rock that I found out about you that I have to ask about, um, <laughs> to sort of speak to the, the crazy achievements you've had, uh, again, at a fairly young period of time in your comics career, um, you worked on patient number nine for Ozzy Osbourne as a storyboard artist, as well as drawing the skull that's depicted in it. Um, yeah. How did that happen? I don't know. That was wild. <laughs> I'm still in shock. I'm in denial about that. <laughs> um, it was actually really weird, though. I had, like, I was trying so hard to get on to a Spawn comic. So I decided to post this TikTok saying, like, day one of trying to get hired on to a Spawn comic. And I just put a few, like, sample pages that I had done um, in the video. And it ended up blowing up and apparently a bunch of people saw it and like sent it to Todd McFarlane. Um, and then I got an email from his assistant like a couple weeks later saying, hey, we saw your video, like Todd wants to schedule a call. And then I was freaking out. And then, yeah, I had like a meeting with him on the phone and a couple other meetings. And yeah, he basically asked like if I wanted to come and work for them and work on this Aussie project for them. And at the time, it didn't like sink in. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. Sounds good. I'm in. And then I got off the phone and I was like, wait, like Aussie as an Ozzy Osbourne or like. <laughs> <laughs> Some like Australian person. What's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. So, yeah, that was kind of wild. And it, it was a grind. I think I pulled a few all nighters working on the storyboards for that. But it was so much fun. No complaints. It was awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. Like, it, it's such a wild opportunity. And one thing I'm noticing is... God, I'm going to sound so dated saying this. The <laughs> younger generation of comics creators. So everyone under... I want to say, like, for some reason, I feel like the line's like 27. Um, folks like yourself who you're far more likely to utilize things like TikTok, Instagram... Um, quick snappy fun media to showcase yourselves mm -hmm. the reach that this new generation is getting to contact guys like Todd McFarlane um, or just generally like these artists and have a lot of people see your stuff it's wild like the like I said this younger generation is just going crazy and I love it because <laughs> we get to see a lot of cool stuff that happens um so talking about cool stuff that happens, your comic, um, I did want to ask, so you have out there an image, and I want to make sure I'm seeing it right here. It's one of your covers, I believe, that is on the Kickstarter. Again, links down below, folks. <laughs> um, where is it? Maybe it's not a cover. In the opening video that you have, um, mm -hmm. There's a shot that has, it looks like five humanoids and the creature um, on it. Oh, and yes. The creature <laughs> behind, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I believe it, it's, yeah, now that I'm seeing it as a whole, that's why I'm not clicking. Um, the main cover. Um, so on yeah, the main yeah. cover, there are one, two, three, four, five, six six humanoids and this creature um i guess we'll start with the 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 main two that we see so the the gentleman with the the green glowing eyes yeah. uh, looking like spawn <laughs> and i'm loving it and then the person beside them who are these people um yeah so those are the two main protagonists um so there are going to be two and two main storylines mm -hmm. um and they're separate at first, but eventually they're going to collide and kind of merge into one storyline. Um, so the guy is Akiro, and he's kind of essentially the main protagonist that develops into a hero. Um, so he's this like kind of reclusive loner. He's working as a headhunter, which is basically a bounty hunter. And he's just like solely wants revenge on the monster that killed his family. Um, so he has to kind of go through his own character arc and stuff and eventually 
gets powers and has to deal with that and like the darker side of them and fighting against that um and then the girl next to him is nora and she's essentially the character that develops into a villain so it follows her path from um kind of right from the beginning i wanted to make like a villain origin story that's not like an origin story it's just the main story um so yeah, she's like this unpredictable runaway that came from the rich city out into the badlands, essentially. Um, she's looking for answers to her parents' mysterious disappearance. Um, and she's basically, she's A, haunted by this traumatic event from her past that she's like ridden with guilt from. And she's this character that's like willing to do anything to survive. So that kind of slowly gets worse and worse until she becomes a villain. So. And then their their paths will eventually cross and combine into an overall story arc, much down the line. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, th- now I, I have questions, but um, <laughs> the the creature, the thing that is behind them on the cover, um, is it the thing that gives them their powers? What is this creature? So his name is Nile. He's kind of named after like nihilism. Um, and he is essentially, he's a demon, which is one of the species of monsters in the comic, um, but they're super rare and he's kind of like the only one left. Um, so he's the monster that basically killed Akiro's family and his whole village back in his childhood. And the events of that kind of get slowly revealed through flashbacks. Um, and he is tied to Akiro and his powers. Um, which will kind of be revealed later. Uh Um, So, yeah, but he's kind of the main... He's not the main overall, like, overlord kind of villain. Okay. Um, He'll come in later, but he is the main villain of, like, the first story arc. Cool. (laughs) Um, The the other question that came up, um, you said way down the line. So, Rich, issue one, is going to be... I'm assuming around 24 pages, which is like the regular floppy size. Yeah, yeah, I think it's 24 or 25, somewhere like standard amount. Yeah, thing. yeah, it's mm-hmm. typical comic stuff, which is all good. Um, further down the line, um, uh, how many how many issues do you foresee? If all goes well, and, and knock on with it, it does. Um... <laughs> I guess, better question, what do you have already sort of cooked and ready to go in in what is like the dream? Oh, there's going to be so many issues. (laughs) (laughs) I honestly, I like the writing part better than the drawing part. So I have like, um, it's going to be multiple story arcs and um, I kind of have the general idea and events for the entire thing planned. Um, But I have all of arc one like totally fleshed out and split into issues Um, So arc one is gonna have about ten issues Um, And then at the end it'll all be combined into a volume Um, And so I think there's gonna be a lot of arcs um, Maybe like ten arcs or something, but it's gonna be really long. So this is kind of just like the start of everything um, so yeah, but arc one will be 10 issues, so I'm really excited to get those out there. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. then, you know what, what I might do, um, after the interview, um, I have previously interviewed, um, the, the Rassicos, who are, um, a, a writer and an artist, or a, a husband-wife couple, uh, partnership, and they make comics together, as well as, you know, she'll draw other people's comics, he letters and, and writes comics, and people draw his stuff um they have a very expansive large universe so if you'd like i'd be happy to connect you to and you can ask questions and, and help get that sorted mentally um yeah that would be deal. awesome yeah done deal um then i i think one thing i do want to ask for the kickstarter um obviously you're you're, you're in the act of drawing it you want to be able to get to a point where you can do a page a day uh, which I mean, even if you were starting from zero pages would mean within a month it's drawn. Yes. Um, yeah. When do you suspect, and I 
I wish upon you the most easy printing press <laughs> production run in the world. Um, when is your expected um, shipment date, so to speak, whether it's digital or physical? So yeah, we're hoping to like basically get everything in all the backers' hands in like July. We said July on the Kickstarter to give ourselves a little bit of a buffer. We're hoping it'll be before then. Um, but yeah, basically we're hoping um, it'll take me about maybe like a little under a month to get the rest of the pages finished. And then after that, we we estimated about a month to like order, get everything in, put it together, ship it out. Um, <laughs> so yeah, by July for sure. Hopefully earlier than that, but. Beautiful. I like it. Um, the The planning is what I like. You you know sort of what to expect. Um, the amount of work you've done in comics tells me that you know your own time well, which is great. Um, <laughs> because that means that people can actually expect exactly what you say. They'll probably not get delays unless something yeah. happens. Again, knock on wood. Um, one thing I did also want to ask about... Um, so you're... Well, I've got multiple things, but um, <laughs> the the next thing I'll ask is your art style or your 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 medium. If I'm not mistaken, you're doing digital, correct? Yep. Yeah. And like you said, it's an iPad, so I'm guessing Procreate. I actually use Clip Studio for everything. Yeah, right, I started okay. with Procreate, and I love Procreate too. I just found Clip Studio is a little bit easier for doing comic pages specifically. Oh. So. Yeah, they make it really easy to do panels and lettering and speech bubbles and just everything you could possibly need in one place. So that sounds really nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, another thing I wanted to mention that I thought was cool and ask about on your website because I've gone through it and, and through there you can branch out and get into things like um, well you can see the spawn pages you made. You can see your other works. Uh, you have available brush packs. Um, yeah. So yeah. if someone sees your style and is like, I want to draw like that, what does the brush pack do? Um, how does someone use it? Because I, I don't know. I, I'm not an artist myself. So from a, someone who knows nothing about it, what's up with a brush pack and in what does it do? Yeah, so it's basically all my um, digital customized brushes that I use. Um, so I've kind of like over the years been making my own brushes on there. Um, so it's each one is a pack of all the brushes that I use for pretty much everything. So the inking pack is like all my inking brushes. Um, I use pretty, probably the first two brushes in that pack for almost absolutely everything. Um, but I have different customized brushes in there for like if you're drawing something like hair and you need something a bit smoother and controlled or if you're doing cross hatching and you need a pen with a nice taper. Um, and then my patterns brush pack is my favorite because it's a bunch of brushes that save so much time because it's just stuff like, oh, if you need a forest background, instead of drawing every single tree, like I've drawn the trees, you're good. I turn it into a brush, you just have to paste them in there. Uh, and stuff like chains and webs, like if you're drawing spawn instead of drawing 100 chains, like. Just click the pen and, <laughs> <laughs> and just go. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, for that, because I, like I said, you obviously you're selling yours, so you obviously make quite good use of it. Um, when did you start making those custom brushes, uh, specifically like the forests, the chains? Um, I imagine a fence one would be really useful. Uh, oh, to make that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, what is it that made you want to make a custom pack like that so that you have your own things where you can just go? Um, I think I started making them, I think just kind of maybe last year or this year, um, fairly recently. And yeah, the thing that kind of made me start making them is um, deadlines <laughs> because um, I try to stick to a page a day. And sometimes if you get a page with like a heavily forested background or something where you have to draw a hundred chains or something like this, like it's just not feasible to do it in a day. Um, but 
sometimes if you're on a tight deadline or you just have to keep up to a certain pace to make enough to pay your bills, um, then it's just a nice, like, handy way to still be able to put out enough um, work to um, make an income, basically, without it being a cheat. Like, it's all still stuff that I have drawn. I've just drawn it once instead of a hundred times. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah, mostly deadlines. It's a good way. I always get um, on a few Instagram posts that I've made saying, like, how to make a change brush in Clip Studio or whatever. They always go off because people get really mad. because They're like, digital art is cheating and all this. But my answer is always just, like, sometimes you have deadlines and you just got to do what you got to (laughs) do. Absolutely. Uh, (laughs) Speaking of of digital art and artists, um, who for you uh, right now anyway are your your artists that you look for for inspiration um you know the the people that make you go oh that was cool i need to do something like that who who is that artist for you or artists oh man there's a bunch but right now probably mostly um javier fernandez his stuff is amazing um i love it um especially his work on spawn is just incredible i love like his use of screen tones and everything um i'm trying to practice that and learn a lot about those from his work and then uh kanan white is amazing he's probably like my favorite artist right now and he did one of the variant covers for rich um so he he is incredible like the level of detail and somehow he uses these really dark shadows but still puts so much detail into it it's crazy, yeah. So <laughs> those two are probably my biggest inspirations right now. Any artist that uses a lot of like uh, screen tones and gray tones, I'm kind of trying to learn a lot from that right now. Very cool. Um, I-, I wanted to ask, so as you mentioned, you- you've got a variant cover um, from Kanan. Um, you've also got a variant cover from um, J. Scott Campbell, uh, which pretty darn big name there in the comics <laughs> industry did, for these variant covers how did you reach out to like did you literally just like tweet at them like hey i've got this comic coming out really like your stuff would you be so kind like, how pretty did, much <laughs> oh cool yeah. okay. i messaged a bunch of artists well not a ton i think i had probably like five artists that i knew i really liked their style and thought it would suit the comic so i pretty much shot them all either an email if I had their email address or a message on Instagram and just said like hey I'm making this comic here's a like reference document package for it um would love to have you do a variant cover if you'd be interested and yeah I was I was really surprised that J Scott Campbell like even saw my message so that was wild (laughs) social media is a very fun and crazy thing where you, when you just yeah. reach out like i always expect when i reach out to like anyone who's more established i'll say um i always expect like it to be some sort of assistant or social media manager who's like oh yeah, uh, yeah no problem i can get this along to them maybe but yeah when yeah it actually, when it's them they're like oh hey dude this looks really cool yeah let's do it it's like what <laughs> yeah <laughs> like in shock for a moment <laughs> oh big time yeah um then you know what? One thing I I wanted to make sure we do is quickly sort of recap the the Kickstarter itself. So it's currently running. It's 70% a little more done, which is awesome. You've got 26 days left. Um, what, again, is the, the bare minimum someone could get the digital comic? And what would the physical comic go for? So the, yeah, the lowest for the digital comic is just $8. And then the physical comic where you get physical copy with the foil cover and the digital copy as well is $25. And then it goes up from there. There's a really cool big one where you can get drawn into the comic. Uh, we've had like, I think one person back to that one, which was sweet. So I'm like excited to draw them as a cool character in the background, but yeah. Awesome. And obviously links down below for that. Um, and Mary, when can, where can people, uh, support you follow you um see your art how do they get in touch with you um so i mostly use instagram they can follow me on mland art um and it's the same on tiktok 
um and twitter i just started posting more there so if anyone wants like more frequent updates little smaller updates and uh insights into the process and stuff like that uh my username is mlandart with two t's at the end um so yeah but instagram is the best place for photos behind the scenes twitter is the best for quick little updates perfection uh, and oh uh, what's your website Oh, it is uh, www.mlandart.com. Beautiful. Nice and easy. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You know what? I'm so glad, like, all your your social media handles, your website pretty well follows the same. Makes life easy for you. Yeah. (laughs) Nice and easy. Um, So, as we've talked about, you're a nerd. um, And I I always like to get people not only getting to see the book and and know how to support the book and what to expect, um, but I like to let people get to know the creator. Um, So in this case, Mary, here's some questions for you um, that are just sort of fun for you, for for people to get to know you. Uh, As mentioned, you're a lifelong nerd. Um, Do you, maybe you don't, because it would have started quite early, I imagine. Um, Do you remember when you started reading comics, manga, um, watching anime or cartoons? Like, what was the the early memories that you have? What was those things that you were absorbing? I think... My mom started introducing us to all that, like, way, like, since we were really, really little. Um, Like, as a toddler, I had, like, Spider-Man pajamas and everything. But I think the earliest thing I remember watching is the old, like, 60s Amazing Spider-Man cartoon. And then there was, like, the Spider-Man and Friends movie um, with him and, like, Iceman and Firestar together that is so nostalgic for me i think that was one of the first like early memories of comics that i have right on okay and uh as as you can see i'm a a big fan of collecting comics and and books and you can't see them but i've got a bunch of figures and stuff elsewhere um i often find folks who create comics like yourself read them but also become nerdy little collectors um what for you is the thing, uh, the, the single piece that would sort of summarize what you enjoy? Maybe not the most valuable, maybe not the most rare or whatever, but like, what's the thing that you're like, this is my cool thing? Oh, um, probably, I love collecting figures too. So probably <laughs> either between this um, Batman Who Laughs figurine I have, it is so badass i love it so much um or um i don't know if they're it's not valuable or anything but just i have the watchman comic and the v for vendetta comic and i think those are probably my two favorites out of my whole collection and i just yeah i love both of them that or the um run of court of owl comics with greg capullo's art that's like i love those so much <laughs> yes, that yeah the the scott steiner capullo run on batman the whole thing if you have not read it folks go read it it's very good um <laughs> yeah there that was a hell of a run um, oh it's amazing <laughs> question the 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 figure you have of the batman who laughs which one is it because they, they've put a ton out as soon as that character came out people were like freaking out a lot of he's too cool yeah um, i can so, grab it i can sure, bring it yeah let me go grab it it's so cool <laughs> <laughs> okay i got it it's Ooh. this one. Oh my god it's sick i just love like the pose and the details and everything on it and he has like a little card with like the justice league's faces on it <laughs> that's awesome that's is that, that is my favorite that that looks like DC Direct? Is that... I honestly don't know. I got it as a Christmas present. <laughs> not Very sure. nice My fiance present. always gets me figures for Christmas. So. <laughs> smart. Very smart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, he actually appears on your Instagram now and again. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, there's a picture of you uh, in the center, and you've got Todd McFarlane, and then uh, your partner on the your right um yeah as mentioned earlier like you sort of brought it up he has helped with the the creation process a little bit and it sort of obviously enables you quite a bit um i'm assuming he's a nerd too (laughs) he is yeah we're like the two sides of nerds he's he's also into comics but he's really big into like 
uh, gaming and Nintendo and he loves like Mario and all that. And then I love the comics. So we're just like encompass all of the nerdy stuff combined. <laughs> awesome. Um, oh, actually a important thing. Um, this year um, feels like the, one of the first years where people are, are, ready to go back into cons in larger amounts and stuff like that um i appreciate you're on the west end um or of the, the west coast of the country um are you planning on going to cons this year as either a creator or just someone you know going to enjoy the show yeah so um my fiance brandon he actually helps with all the conventions and booking them and getting all our setup prepped and everything. So he's got a bunch lined up. I think the next one we're going to be doing is Toronto Comic Con in March. Oh. Um, and then we're going to be doing Yeti Con and Niagara Falls Comic Con. Um, and then I believe Edmonton, Calgary. Um, we're trying to hit as many Canadian ones as we can. Um, and the goal is for maybe next year to start doing US conventions. Um, okay. We're just currently trying to figure out how to do it with like taxes and everything. Yeah. It's kind of complex. <laughs> I, I I've talked to a few people and and yeah they were like it's not great with the border how they monitor like the the money end of it. Yeah I again I wish you the best of luck. Um, <laughs> good to know you're going to Comic Con or, or planning to go again all goes well uh, next month. Um, I might just see you there. Um, oh, perfect! Yeah. Yeah. Um, then in that case, I feel like we we've kind of covered all the important stuff. Um, so I think I will open it up to you. Is there anything that you want folks to know that we haven't yet touched on? Um, I don't, can't think of anything other than like, well, maybe one thing: the comic. So basically on the Kickstarter, the, I have a few pages there and it says like what it looks like and it's a couple of pages. Um, but something I didn't realize was that those are actually pages from the prologue. So oh, I'm okay. hoping to upload once I get to them onto the Kickstarter, a couple of pages from the main part of the story, actually depicting the main characters and stuff. So the pages that are on there, that guy is more of a side character. So. I guess maybe if people are looking at that, um, I would say the whole comic is going to look a little more similar to some of the um, covers on there as opposed to those first few pages. So, yeah. Oh, okay. People yeah, are looking. Yeah. I, one thing, yeah, when I, I saw the pages that you do have up, one thing they almost immediately reminded me of, like if, if you took all the color out of them, um, is like the old EC comics. Um, again, because you use such extremely dark blacks for shadows and everything like that um that's sort of what my brain went to especially like with the expressions you draw with you know like the the one gentleman on the, the first page where he, his eyes are just open <laughs> and he's got all the the lines all over just to emphasize it um good it, it's cool to know that you'll be going from that into more like i said sort of earlier that john boy meyer style it looks a little flashier. It's a little more, um, and I hope this translates well. And people mentally <laughs> can get a bit juicy, like the the colors that are in it will be like yeah, stronger. Um, exactly. Because yeah, the prologue, I, the colors I, I wanted it to be muted and cool tones and stuff. So, which was tough because I did the colors initially, and I was like, oh, I love it. It looks so colorful and vibrant. It looks awesome. And I'm like, well, but it doesn't look creepy. So then I got to mute all of it. So. Um, yeah, and even in terms of content and stuff, that guy will be more of a side character. So I think maybe the prologue is a little bit, not deceiving, but just in the sense of it, it kind of almost makes it seem like it's going to be this like horror people mm -hmm. running from monsters in the apocalypse kind of thing. And it's very much going to be more of like a shonen kind of thing almost. Lots of people with powers, villains, monsters, that kind of thing. So Yeah, like... A, a little bit of um, almost a mix of like Spawn, the Darkness, um, things like that. Yeah, yeah. And it's really inspired by some anime too. Like, I, I think it's very heavily inspired by Bleach because uh, oh. that's one of my favorite animes. So 
it's gonna be kind of similar to that as well monsters powers op characters <laughs> hell yeah well i mean the the monster you've got from the page with the prologue which again i'll put up for people um reminds me of the first um i'm gonna say the wrong term for it but the the first monster that ichigo faces the gigantic um like 50 story yeah. tall yeah that's what that reminds me of just the way you've drawn it that yeah i think i'm very even subconsciously influenced by bleach sometimes i'm just like <laughs> i love it so much so it's gonna be very influenced by that probably even if i try for it not to be <laughs> i mean hey we we always emulate what we love and, and what we respect and it's the greatest way to show admiration nothing wrong with that yeah exactly yeah. um so in that case i guess that brings us to my last two questions um, so, Mary, um, what is it that you're currently reading? Oh, um, I'm reading the Gunslinger Spawn series. Um, kind of trying to keep up with all the Spawn ones, but I kind of like Gunslinger the best. So I'm reading that. Um, I'm also just starting Dracula, which is not a comic, I guess. But I've always wanted to read like the Bram Stoker oh, book. You, yeah. Yeah. So I'm starting that. And then um, I have the three jokers book and joker war and those are kind of next on my list that i'm so far behind on that but i've been like really pumped to get into those ones so those are next up perfect well um question how is gunslinger spawn because i i enjoy spawn i'm i'm one of the 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 prudes who prefers older <laughs> spawn the newer stuff it hasn't clicked with me uh, but how is mm -hmm. gunslinger it's good i kind of um i almost agree with you because i only started getting into spawn a few years ago and so i started right from the start with the originals yeah um so it kind of started off with liking those <clears throat> but i feel like gunslinger spawn is still spawn but it's different enough that it feels really unique and yeah. fresh and it feels different enough that it's not like trying to be the old classic spawn it's almost like its own thing. It almost gives off the vibes of like the Mandalorian uh, compared oh. to the main Star Wars series. Um, it's very like Western and even the character that is Gunslinger Spawn is very different character wise from the regular Spawn, which is really nice and cool to have something different. Huh. And the art is amazing. I mean, yeah. It, just <laughs> art. Like just the covers yeah. of it, I've been like, that looks so good, but I'm like, uh so i will have to pick up a collected edition now thank you yes yes um, definitely you. yeah uh, on the the way of bram stoker's dracula so one kudos for reading it and getting into it um it's a slow burn but it's very good so i appreciate there might be times it gets boring stick yeah. through because it's a really good book um, oh that's good to know <laughs> yeah totally awesome um and my apologies what was the the third thing you mentioned um oh um three jokers and joker war uh, yes. i haven't started them yet but i'm excited to what i will say is jo uh, three jokers i don't know if it actually ties into main continuity if you're ever concerned about that i was wondering is, about that yeah yeah it, it's i believe i could be wrong but i believe from everything i've read it's its own little story it's like an elseworld story very cool i hope you enjoy it I love the Joker, so I'm like, oh, whole Joker comic, I'm in. <laughs> Perfect. Um, the more Jokers, um, the better. <laughs> yes. Um, and then, Mary, my last question. Um, what do you want the folks out there to know? Um, I think just, I don't know, knowing that uh, the comic is coming, it's going to be awesome. And, uh, yeah, it's not just a one-off. I've got a bunch lined up, so this is kind of just the beginning, so... <laughs> Perfect. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Um, absolutely, Mary, you've been a joy to speak with. So thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's been awesome. I love talking comics, so. <laughs> well, anytime <laughs> when, when number two comes out, I'll, uh, I'll hit you up. Um, Definitely, yeah. Oh, yeah. And the folks out there in YouTube land, thank you so much for tuning in. Comment down below what you thought of Mary. Click the link for the Kickstarter now uh, and like, comment, subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Golden age to present, digest to oversize, never miss new comic day, yeah, no surprise, so where's my no prize, check the letter columns, can't find issue two, yeah.
collector problems, cliffhangers, mysteries, you need answers. When did Batman become Green Lantern? I get it, true believer, not lying. Always up for an awesome summer crossover tie-in. High flying, full color of black and white. Splash pages, flashbacks, wet your appetite. With new costumes, team-ups, first loves, first appearances.